Today on Toy Habits, we will be taking a detailed look at the G.I. Joe Classified series Master of Disguise and Leader of the Dreadnought Zartan and comparing him to his vintage self from 1984. But if that wasn't enough, we've made a custom digital downloadable file card for this misfit. Hey everyone, welcome back to Toy Habits and today we are taking an up close and personal look at the G.I. Joe classified series Zartan, comparing him to his vintage self from 1984 and sharing our custom downloadable file card we created. And let's start off like we usually do by looking at the box and Zartan comes in the G.I. Joe classified series window display box and you can see all of his accessories here and there is nothing hidden behind the art that is on the box right here. And zeroing in on the art that's on front of the box, let's first look at this image right here. And I absolutely love the way that Zartan is illustrated here. And I love the gritty look on his face. And it honestly looks like he was ripped from the cartoon and just given an updated look, just like his classified figure. So this is one of my favorite illustrations on a G.I. Joe classified series, and it ranks up there in the top three. And with these G.I. Joe classified series boxes, the illustrations bleed over to the side of the box and you get a two for one here. We have his backpack bleeding over the, to the side and we have his illustration that is more of the skyscraper image over here and his arm is bleeding over side. So let's take a look at that image now. And on the side of the box near the top, we see a very sinister looking Zartan here. And I love that they gave him jaggedy teeth. It just goes along with his devious persona that they've illustrated here. I love that they've made his eyes green and it just makes the illustration have a lot more depth and dimension and character. I love that he's holding his mask and I'm not sure if he's putting it on or taking it off. Has he fooled somebody? Is he going in disguise? Who knows? And as we make our way down the side of the box, you see his arm coming through the front of the box to the side and he's holding his gun. And both of these illustrations are fantastic. And again, are one of my favorites in the G.I. Joe classified series. And looking at the back of the box, we see a very cool picture of Zartan and man, he looks jacked. I don't think I've seen muscles like this on Zartan anywhere. It looks like he's been going out to the Dreadnought gym and really pumping iron. He's got a knife in his hand and he just looks like he is out to get somebody. And since Zartan is the first of the Dreadnoughts to be in the G.I. Joe Classified series, we see this new Dreadnought logo on the side of the box and I think it's absolutely amazing. I love the way this is drawn and we'll get a closer peek at it when we take Zartan out of the box. But let's see what Zartan is known for. He is a level four mercenary. His level three designation is classified and that really goes along with his vintage file card. There is not a lot known about Zartan. He is a level three at infiltration and he is a level four at master of disguise. And I think that is totally fitting for him because he is the, because he personifies master of disguise. So why am I still talking about the side of the box? Well, I have to show it, but as I alluded to earlier, we've created a custom file card for Zartan. And if you haven't checked out our G.I. Joe classified series file card reveal, go check that out after this review. Now the file card is the first of the Dreadnought line. And what we tried to do was put the iconography in context with Zartan's story, like the vintage file cards, but in a more updated look. You can find these file cards as a free download in the description and remember to hit that subscribe button for more file card reveals in the future. All right, so I slipped that insert totally out of the box so you can get a closer look at the new Dreadnought symbol. And I absolutely love the way that this was illustrated. We have a skull that has horns. We have snake daggers going through the skull. We have a cobra that is wrapped around the skull and coming out out of the top of the head in just a fierce venomous pose. And just the total package of this illustration screams the dreadnoughts. And I love the colors that they chose here. It's a swampy green and it could not be more fitting for the dreadnoughts. And before we get into the details of Zartan, I just want to make one comment about his paint app. And it's a very basic paint app. It's got just blacks and browns, but it actually really works for the Zartan character. So let's start off by looking at his head sculpt. 
And let's first start off by looking at his hood and his hood is designed beautifully. There are some smooth finishes here and I love the crackled alligator detail that they've given it on the side. And it's smooth around the back and this striped crackling detail carries over. And if you take a look, it's actually a piece that is hanging off of his hood. So it gives it a lot of dimension and it just adds that extra special something to this hood. And you can see the same detail on the other side and if you look at the side view you can see that centerpiece on the hood hanging off the back like an alligator tail. Now as I would love to claim that I know everything about G.I. Joe and Zartan but I do not and I can't find any imagery of him wearing a scarf but I'm gonna speculate that they had put this scarf in to make his neck look less pronounced and less like a giraffe so let's take a look at his head sculpt without his scarf and his hood. And Zartan comes with a removable hood, which is very cool because you couldn't do that in the vintage figure. And his scarf is also removable. And I think as I expected, his neck just looks really huge without the scarf on it. And if you turn him around, it looks even longer from the back. So a lot of figures suffer from the articulation joints showing here and the little ball joint pegs. So maybe that's why they needed the scarf to cover up his long neck. And I'm just going to put this back on him because he just kind of looks too weird without it. So now that we have his scarf on, we can take a look at his head sculpt. And I love the way that they have sculpted his head and just the facial details that they've given him really make him come to life. And he's got a kind of a smirk here and you can see his cheekbones protruding and the flesh on his skin like you would normally see if you were smirking. And he has a nice jawline and his ear detail is actually amazing. This is one of the best ears I've ever seen on a figure. And I love the paint app on his face here. I love that they have given him more of a teardrop look on that paint app and I love that these things kind of come up to points like a horn, like he's the devil or something. So maybe he is. And moving down to his torso, let's take a closer look at his armor. And all I can say for his armor is it is just layers and layers of sculpting detail and fits and finishes here. You can see the riveting detail here. There is armor detail. There's a different finish. It's more glossy on his chest plate here and then also on his abdomen. And you can see some strap detail here that carries on over to the side and it looks like a natural strap underneath his arm there. And I just think overall this piece is amazing and even better his shoulder armor can is movable and malleable so it does not hinder his articulation so you can raise his arm up any way you want and it will freely flow and you can squish it and play with it and I just think it just completes the total package for his armor and I love that you can see through it as it's a little bit disconnected from the rest of the armor. And looking at the back of his armor it looks just as good from the front as it does from the back and again there are just layers and layers of texturing and detail here so we have a lot of riveting we have some upper armor here which kind of bleeds into some armor that is sculpted a little bit lower and a little bit recessed on his back so I just think this whole piece of armor just looks amazing. And moving down to his abdomen, he does have a chiseled set of abs that run right into this belt here. And if you look really closely, you can see his belt buckle detail and it looks like it's a skull or a ram's horn. I really don't know what it is, but I think it looks really cool. It's a tiny piece that's on his belt and I love the riveting that they put on his belt all the way around. And if we take a look at the belt where the sheath is on the back, there is a lot of texture here that kind of mimics more of a leathery look. There's also a different finish down here on the bottom. And I think it's just overall, this piece is very well done. And there's also some ports on the side of it, which you can plug in as accessories, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. All right, and taking a look at Zartan's arms, they are symmetrical and are the same on both sides, but I'm gonna use both arms to show you some of the details that you'll see on his armor. So he has a very intricately sculpted piece of forearm armor, and I love the angles here. And I just think this is probably the best looking forearm armor that I've seen on a G.I. Joe classified figure. And I love the way that it comes to a point there. And if you look, on the underside of the forearm armor, you can see that 
alligator detail here and you see a little bit different texturing that's coming right underneath the forearm armor between the straps so you can also see some of the glove detail they've given it that textured look and they've also given the top of his glove a textured look too so they put so much detail into the forearms and the hands in this one and did I mention that Zartan's arms are jacked? They have a ton of vein detail here, and I love this strap because it actually makes his muscles look a lot bigger than they are. I think they took a cue from the WWE and are using this as bicep ties just to make his arms look a little bigger. But I love the detail and just all of the sculpting that they put in here just to make his biceps and triceps and his whole muscle build of his arm just look really realistic. And moving down to the pants, he's given a basic set of brown pants with some jaggedy sculpting detail here. And I'm going to sound like a broken record, but they've layered in a lot of his armor here. So his armor sits on top of his pants and it just looks really cool. There's a strap that looks like it's holding it on. And I love the way that it's angled and it really ties in with his forearms. And looking at his knee pads, they gave it a really unique shape. So it's angled down here. There's also a lot of sculpting detail that you can see here. And it's just a very intricate piece that they decided to put on this figure. And again, it just goes along with his shin armor, his forearm armor, and just the whole package in general. And finally, let's take a look at his shin armor and his shoes. And I love the detail that they've given his shin armor here. It looks like they have some slashing here that's like battle damage. And again, it's a very angular piece. It's actually a bulky piece that flares out and it's not super form fitting, but I think it goes with the character because if you look at the total package and the total figure, there's a lot of layering on his thighs. There's also a lot of layering that goes on on his forearm armor, his shoulder armor and his chest armor so I think giving him a piece of shin armor that looks this bulky just completes the look of the figure even more. And taking a look at Zartan's shoes, he comes with a bulkier shoe, but it has a lot of detail. The tread is really pronounced on this particular pair of shoes. And you can see that there are some gray detail here on the top of the boot, if I'm not mistaken, if the light is not playing tricks on me. But I like the way that his boots are textured and I love the way that they fold at the bottom and it looks like he's actually wearing the boots. Now Zartan does come with a lot of accessories so first let's take a look at his knife and I'm actually really surprised that they didn't throw a cobra head on this knife just given the dreadnought symbol but I do like the way that this knife is sculpted and it's got some jaggedy edges here and it looks like there is some rivet detail and this will go in his sheath which we'll show you after we've finished looking at all of his accessories. Next up, let's take a look at his gun and they actually recreated his vintage style gun here and they've given it a little flare on the handle by having this hook flare out here. And we're gonna get to comparing his vintage gun with this gun in a second, but I do like the way this gun is sculpted and it just fits with the line so perfectly. And let's take a look at one of the two more interesting pieces that they have decided to make for this figure. And first up is this monkey paw. Now, I have no clue where this monkey paw even came from, but when we did our roll call episode in our top five favorite G.I. Joe classified figures, there is a viewer by the name of Grimpool00, and he said that this monkey paw is cursed and it contains wish control and voodoo magic. So... I'm going to go with that, and it definitely fits with the Zartan and Dreadnought Swamp Hideout theme. And the claw is really cool, and they've given it some kind of fur sculpting here, and it just looks really, really creepy. It kind of looks like a human hand, but it's a monkey paw. <laughs> And next up, let's take a look at this snake head that you can attach to his belt. And again, I really don't know the origins of this snake head and I can only speculate. So if anyone knows, please comment below and let us know what the origins of the snake head is. And all I know that is pretty cool and I love that it has an open mouth. And if you take a closer look, they've given some sculpting detail to the mouth here and they've colored this thing all brown and even the fangs. It would have been cool if this had white tip fangs, but I think this accessory is really, really awesome. 
and Zartan will not be complete without his mask. So let's take a look at this one here. And I love that they've given this dead eyes. There are no irises in these eyeballs and it, this face mask just looks really dead. And it really mimics the vintage figure mask, which we will look at in a minute. But I love the facial detail here that they've given it, the eyebrows and also the mustache and the love patch or soul patch that he has on his chin. And I'm saving the best piece for last. And yes, it is Zartan's backpack. And it just looks really, really awesome. It has some detail that you didn't find in the vintage figure backpack design. And it looks like there are fans and a little cooling system here. And I think that's to keep his mask alive. And if it's really a truly a skin fitting mask, then you'll need something to keep it from spoiling or going bad. And one of the coolest parts that you'll see is when you crack open the mask, you can see all of the detail that they put inside here. And it really looks like this is a machine in here that is meant to keep skin alive. And as you can see, there is a spot for his mask, which we'll show you in a second. But I love that they had put red detail in here and that just really brings that concept to life. And one last thing to look at here is how his mask fits in this backpack. And here it is, and it just looks amazing. I mean, the total package of the mask and the backpack are so cool, and I wish that I could display this from behind with his backpack off because I just love these pieces. And here is Zartan all geared up with his mask on, holding his gun, and you can see where the monkey paw and the snake head plug into his belt here, and they actually plug in really tightly, and I'm very pleased with that because sometimes these accessories can be super finicky and they fall off. And here is the sheath and his knife, and they look fantastic together, and here is his backpack on his back, and that plug just plugs into a port in his back and you have the total package of Zartan, the master of disguise. All right, and on to my favorite part of these reviews, the vintage comparison with the G.I. Joe classified comparison. So let's take a look at his guns and get those out of the way. And if you take a closer look at these guns, they are sculpted very similar to, to each other. And I love the way that they've translated the vintage gun on Zartan and updated it for the G.I. Joe classified series and still retain that vintage look and feel. And taking a look at the similarities in the backpack and you can also see some of the detail in here which I actually haven't noticed in a very long time until I crack this one open and it looks like it just has a little bit of machinery to keep his mask alive and they've really represented that very nicely in the G.I. Joe Classified series backpack. All right, and here is how they look with both of their masks on. And to tell you the truth, I have not put a mask on the vintage Zartan in so long. I think I'm getting verklempt and I need a little minute here. Oh my God, he looks amazing. Anyway, the similarities are very cool in this one. And you can see that both figures look very, very cool with their masks on. And the differences really lie in the facial hair detail that they've given them. So they've given the G.I. Joe classified series mask more of a mustache and a soul patch versus Zartan's look of a goatee, a mustache and a beard. And so the whole beard runs all the way up to his ears. And they also gave the vintage Zartan mask some eyes. So there's a little bit of differences here, but I think that the vintage Zartan look looks more like General Zod from Superman, in my opinion, just looking back over the years. And I think they wanted to differentiate this look in the G.I. Joe classified series. And another similarity that you'll find in the head sculpts is the way that this black is outlined around their eyes. And I've mentioned this before, but I love the way that the teardrop look is painted on Zartan's face here. And I do like the black outlines that they've given him here, but it kind of looks like more like a superhero mask or something that Wolverine might have or Batman. But again, Zartan does have a unique look and I'm not saying that he does look like those superheroes, but I'm just making the connection here. And a couple more things I want to point out before we move on. They really tried to mimic his shoulder armor here in the G.I. Joe classified figure with the shoulder armor on the vintage figure. And they did that really nicely. And obviously both of the figures have chest plates and I'm actually pretty disappointed that this particular version of the G.I. Joe classified Zartan did not come with a clear chest plate. But overall, I think the design of the chest plate is really, really amazing. And it's, I'm really nitpicking here. And the last thing we're going to take a look at and know 
it's not both of their crotches so sorry guys it is their thigh armor and again they've give they've given the vintage figure a clear thigh armor that actually comes off and they've given the gi joe classified version some black thigh armor that doesn't come off and i think the boots are pretty similar here i mean they're they're pretty chunky and they look pretty chunky in both of the vintage figure and the G.I. Joe classified version and it looks like they've represented the knife that's on the right boot of Zartan in the sheath behind the G.I. Joe classified Zartan here. So a lot of nods to the vintage figure and I applaud Hasbro's design in this case. Now with Zartan being the master of disguise you can get pretty playful in how you might display him so he could look like Duke. Or how about Flint? Or a uh, Major Blood? So little known fact, this was my first ever G.I. Joe classified figure that I ever opened and this version of Zartan got me hooked on the line. I think the fits and finishes on this figure are some of the best that I've seen in the line and they really left no detail unturned here. What are your favorite aspects of this figure? How do you display him? We'd love to know in the comments below so sound off. Also, don't forget to take a look at the description to download Zartan's custom file card. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for tuning in and please hit that subscribe button on your way out.